Hello, eighth grade. We are going to be working with linear functions, specifically finding patterns with linear functions. And you have seen linear functions. Remember, linear functions are, uh, it's just a function whose graph makes a line. It's straight line, okay? Not anything curved. Those would not be considered lines. Um, you'll see linear functions written as f of x equals, and then this is just whatever, 2x plus 1. Remember, f of x is just another label instead of putting y equals 2x plus 1 when you're thinking about it. Function, it just means function of x instead of saying y. Still, you do the math the same. It's just a different label. So let's look at this first one. This is example one. So write this in your journals. Use the graph to write a linear function that relates y to x. When it says relates y to x, that's why you see it like this way. x is the uh, function on the inside. So the first thing you need to do when you're trying to use a graph is look at all your points, and you need to find a slope. And remember, slope can be found by taking uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you know, which is rise over run. So I'm just going to pick two of these points. It doesn't matter which two. I'm actually going to choose these two middle ones because I think the math is going to be pretty simple. So y2 minus y1 would be uh, negative 3 minus 0, and then I have to start with the same point, so then I do 0 minus 2. So this would be negative 3, and this would be negative 2. A negative divided by a negative becomes positive. So my slope is 3 over 2. So then I'm going to plug this slope into where the slope goes in my y equals mx plus b equation. And if you can look on the graph to see where it crosses the y line, then you already know the y-intercept. If they're not giving you a graph, you can solve for the y-intercept. But in this case, we can look at the y line and see that it crosses right here at negative 3. So then my equation would be written y equals, put my slope, 3 halves x, and then my y-intercept is at negative 3. So you just say negative 3. So the linear function is written like this. All right, let's go to on your own number 1. I'm going to back up. Now, I know you guys don't have graph paper, so just sketch this as best you can. You know me. You don't have to be an artist. It'll be fine. All right, so for this one, it says use the graph or table to write a linear function that relates y to x. So we're doing the same thing we did just a second ago in example. Uh, oh, I totally skipped example two, didn't I? <laughs> Let's do that one. Um, so let me delete this and we'll come back to it. Totally skipped example two. Crazy me. It's because I get interrupted and I have to pause the video for a second and talk to whoever needs to talk to me. So, All right, so example two, we're going to do a table. Or rather, use a table, anyhow. All right, so we're going to use this table to write a linear function that relates y to x. Again, you have your points. And remember, this would be a point. This would be a point. If you wanted to graph it, you could. So if I were to write this in point form, it would be negative 3, 9. This would be negative 2, 7, because this is x and y. This would be negative 1, 5. And this last would be 0, 3. So I can use any two of these points to find my slope. It doesn't matter which two you use. I'm going to use these last two because I think the math will be easy. So again, you're doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I have 3 minus 5 over 0 minus a negative 1. 
Okay? Now when you have minus a negative 1, it becomes a positive. So this is 3 minus 5 would be negative 2. 0 plus 1 would be 1. That just makes your slope a negative 2. Now, you can find where it crosses the y line on a table if one of your x's equals 0. Then this is always your y-intercept. So that means I can go ahead and write this. y equals negative 2 is my slope, x, and then my y-intercept is positive 3. So then this would be your linear function. Okay? All right, now let's go do the on your owns. On your own number one. All right, so again, we have our graph, and we're going to use these points to find the linear function. So the first thing we need to do is find my slope. So pick any two points that you want to solve for the slope. Um, I don't think it really matters, so I guess, oh, we could draw the slope. Instead of doing rise over run, we could just count it. So let's do that. I'm going to take the leftmost slope. My rise is down 1, so my top is negative 1, and then my run is 1, 2, so over 2. So then my slope equals negative 1 half. Okay, and then where's my y-intercept? Crosses the y-line at negative 1, so here's my equation. y equals my slope is my negative 1 half, x, and then my y-intercept is at negative 1. So it's even faster when you can look at it on the graph like that. Okay? So if you, if the just counting the blocks doesn't make sense to you, then remember just to do that uh, rise over run, which is the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It all works the same. Alright, let's look at number two on your own. This is a table. Alright, so looking at this table, we're finding the linear function again, so you need to find the slope. Now, notice here, all of my y's are the same, so visualize this. All the y's are at positive 2, so positive 2 would be right there. So essentially, I'm going to have a line that's doing this number. So when you have a line that looks like that, what is my slope? It's going to be 0, but let's do the math so you can see it. So I'm just going to pick two points. So I'm going to say 2 minus 2 over negative 1 minus a negative 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 would be 1. Anytime you have a number, a fraction with uh, 1, or sorry, uh, 0 on the top, then the slope, the answer is just 0. So again, you can see how the slope is 0. And then we want to find the y-intercept where it crosses the y-line. Remember, where it crosses the y-line is when x equals 0. So I can say y equals 0 is my slope plus 0. Now, when you're writing the linear function, you don't actually have to put the slope if it is a 0. So I could have said y equals, I'm sorry, this was supposed to be at 2. <laughs> the y-intercept is at 2. Um, so back to this, if I have a zero slope, I can just say y equals and then whatever the um, y-intercept is. Okay, I will accept either answer. It doesn't matter to me which one. They're both technically correct. This one is more simplified. All right, let's look at the next example.
right, this one is example three. Make sure you're putting these in your journals. It says, graph the data in the table. Tell whether the domain is discrete or continuous. So that's A, discrete or continuous. B is write a linear function. And C is how many calories do you burn in four and a half hours? Okay. So the first thing is to graph this. I'm actually not going to require you to do that right now since we are via vir virtual learning. But I'm going to show you what the graph would look like. So if you were to graph this, this is what it would look like. And it asks you whether this is continuous or discrete. Now remember, what's the difference between continuous and discrete? Uh, discrete means that um, it has to be specific points throughout, uh, you know, whole numbers, I guess you could say. Whereas continuous could be part of, uh, part of the item that you're discussing. Can you have part of an hour? Yes, you can have a half an hour or a quarter of an hour. So if you can have a portion of it, you can see that anywhere on this line would count. So this would be a continuous domain. All right, so for B, we're supposed to write a linear function that relates y to x. All right, so we're finding the y equals mx plus b. So the first thing you need to do is find the slope. So pick any two points on here. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to pick these two points. So I would say uh, 1,200 minus 600 over 4 minus 2. So 1,200 minus 600 is just 600. 4 minus 2 would be 2. Simplify that. What's 600 divided by 2? 300. So then my slope is 300. And then where is my y-intercept? You can see it crosses the y-line at 0. So my equation is going to be y equals 300x, because 300 is my slope, and then you could say plus zero on the end of it, but since it's plus zero, you can actually just leave it off. Um, so your linear equation would be y equals 300x. Okay, so that's the answer for b. Whoops, forgot to switch back to my pen. All right, and then for c, it says, um, how many calories do you burn in 4.5 hours? Okay, 4.5 hours, you can see the hours is the x line. So we're going to plug in 4.5 where that x is. So your y equals 300 times 4.5. You could look on the graph, you know, and go up, but that's hard to figure. So let's do the math uh, behind it, and that's a lot simpler than trying to guess on a graph line. So 300 times 4.5 is going to give you y equals 1,350. This is a word problem. What am I talking about here? Calories. So we're going to write calories. And this is my final answer. So in four and a half hours of kayaking, you would burn 1,350 calories. That's a long day of kayaking, four and a half hours. Good. Okay, let's do on your own number three. 